All right, Shalom. There's a brother in the hallway from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rokakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. All right. Yahweh is the name of the one they ignorantly call God. Yahweh Shah is the name of the one they ignorantly call Jesus. Bahashem is in the name in the Paleo Hebrew. All right. Raka is spirit. Kodash is holy. Akyam is brothers and Akwath is sisters. All right. And that is in the original tongue. All right. The original Hebrew. All right. Which you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the Israelites of the Bible and your descendants that are scattered amongst all nations. All right, I want to go into a lesson through the spirit on faith without limits. All right, faith without limits. All right, ultimately, the Lord is building up our understanding and our ability to have faith without limits. All right, this is Matthew chapter 19. And I'll start at verse 26. And it reads, but Yahweh Shai beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible, but with Yahweh Bashimah Shai, all things are possible. All right. And we're returning to this understanding. Lord willing, we're a part of that number of the elect. All right. We're returning to that understanding that with the Lord, all things are possible, meaning faith without limits. And this is what we should aspire to have through the spirit that with the Lord, all things are possible. Not some things, but all things. All right. This is Matthew chapter 17. And I'll just get the point. This is verse 20. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you and this is what we are being exercised in working our way up through the spirit to the understanding lord willing that nothing is impossible with the heavenly father that all things through the spirit of yahweh shemal shai are possible why would paul say we are more than conquerors why because our power yahweh shemal shai is capable of the impossible of anything as the scriptures say, nothing is too hard for the Lord. And to have this truth is a down payment on that understanding. Now, ultimately, the, the, grand, the grand finale or the ultimate manifestation of impossible being possible is, is the deliverance. But even now through the spirit, we're exercising and practicing um, to have faith without limits. And this is why having faith is so important, not just in a general sense, but as an individual that has this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemal Shai, there's a, a need, all right, to have extraordinary faith. And we're being built up to that point through the spirit. And that is faith without limits. Even what we understand is, is far more than men understand. Even with the milk, to have faith in the milk is extraordinary faith. In the records, the things that were written aforetime were left for our learning that we may abound in that same faith. All right, matter of fact, let's go to Jeremiah. This is Jeremiah chapter 32 and 17. Our Lord. Yahweh behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. All right, and that is who we serve through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai, and nothing is impossible to the Lord. And this is why faith without limits um, is the topic of this lesson, because it's a small thing for the Lord to save you. All right. But it, it does require faith. 
because we're not going to know exactly how if we're saved. Lord willing, we're a part of that number. The elect are not going to know how they're saved in great detail until after it's all done. But the elect are going to believe that the Lord is going to finish the work that he started in them. And that in itself requires faith without limits. This is why uh, in Second Edges it says uh, to neither uh, be afraid nor doubt. This is why in Ecclesiastes, the second chapter, it says, ye that fear the Lord, hope for good. Because the Lord is strong and mighty to save as well. All right. And if you have this truth, that's, there's a down payment on that. All right. That's why the scriptures say ye that endure unto the end. And in Revelation, it tells you to hold fast that no man take thy crown. All right. This is second edges, chapter 16 and verse 74. Here. O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid and neither doubt for the most high is your guide and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord power. Let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. All right. And this is a. This is the balance. All right. This is the balance through the spirit that we have to believe that the Lord is capable of anything, man. And those who fear the Lord, it's a it's a must. All right. That you hope for good. And that's that requires faith without limits. The scriptures talk about men mounting up as eagles. That's never been seen on the earth. But if the Lord said it, it's going to happen. And just like we believe the judgment, we believe Jacob's trouble. You have to believe in the spiritual power as well and the deliverance. And as the scriptures say, you put on, therefore, as the elect, meaning you hope for good. Don't let the flesh con uh, convince you that it's. You know, it's, it's not OK to hope for good, to hope that the Lord save you, to believe that the Lord can save you from your situation. That is faith without limits on a personal level. All right. And we're we're working to get to that point. You know, I do these lessons through the spirit for myself, first and foremost. All right. And for those through the spirit that this may uh, edify. All right. It's Philippians chapter one and verse five. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. And when it says that he which hath begun a good work, that means it's personal. That means whatever uh, situation and lifestyle the Lord pulled you from and put you in this truth. You have to believe that the Lord is going to finish that course. And that goes beyond just believing you're an Israelite. You have to believe that the Lord is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. And that requires faith without limits. And even now, I'll say this through the spirit to even believe. Is faith without limits. To believe that the Lord is going to save us. From all of these different things that are being prepared against us requires faith without limits. But then there's another side that talks about spiritual power and things of that nature that you have to believe personally. Not just in general, but personally. That it is possible for you. You know and believe through the spirit. Lord will we endure to the end. You have to believe that it's possible for you. This is what it means to hope for good. Real quick, I'm going to grab that. This is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2. And I'm going to jump down to verse. I'll start at verse 8. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him. And your reward shall not fail. Part of that belief is that men are going to mount up. Men are going to run and not be tired. Men are going to be able to run through a troop. 
Men are, are, are not going to die. But just believing that, generally speaking, isn't enough. You're going to have to take that belief and make it personal. Just like it's easy to imagine yourself in the worst case scenario, it's easy to go ahead and turn the table and imagine and hope for good, man. You can use that same imagination for something more positive. Verse 9 reads, Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. That's a balance. Those that fear the Lord are going to hope for good. And everlasting mercy and joy, everlasting joy and mercy. The Lord then told us some very marvelous things in the scriptures concerning the time that we're living in. Things that the Lord made known unto us. And while we know through the spirit that the Lord is coming to judge, we also know about these things that the Lord spoke of concerning men doing greater works than Hamashiach. Men being able to mount up as eagles and fly, literally fly. Men not tasting death again. This being the, first, the last time a man has been born through a mother's womb. That's going to apply to some of the elect. That requires faith without limits. That anything is literally possible through the spirit. And this is what we're being edified to understand. Edified mean, meaning built up. That seed of faith that we have through the spirit is abounding, Lord willing, to this understanding. I mean, could you imagine in your own day to day that out of nowhere, somebody just start flying? That, that is you. Or that you're able to have the power through the spirit of the Lord to tell a man to get up from his chair. And he's been bound to that chair for his whole life. Do you believe that that's possible? Not generally speaking, but do you believe that that's possible for you? As the scripture said, we put on there for as the elect. And you have to believe that that's possible. It ain't enough for you to just generally speaking, you believe that the Lord is. You have to believe that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek them, him. And you also have to believe that you're a part of that if the Lord has given you this truth and allowed you to serve. We need, we have to, we, Lord willing, we abound in faith. That we abound in this understanding that anything is possible. You got Esau who talk about the elements, that there's a, the universe is expanding, that there's billions, if not trillions of planets and galaxies. And you serve the source of that. That means the limitations that we have are really just us. And our thought process. And that's why we're going through this refining period. Because a lot of our trials, our tribulations, the Lord putting us in uncomfortable situations is the Lord breaking down those limitations that we've had from being in Babylon. This is why these things are amazing when the Lord talks about nothing being impossible to you. In Matthew, the 17th chapter, I'm going to get that one more time. Because he said nothing is impossible. Then he said to you, if you have this type of faith. Lord willing. This is uh, Matthew 17 and 20. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Because this is not this is not new. The Lord been able to do the impossible. But in a sense, it'll be new to you. It's refreshed. As the scripture says in John the sixth chapter, the Lord will raise them up in the last days. We're being raised back up by the stirring of uh, by way of pure remembrance. And one of the biggest pieces of, of that is faith. 
believing that you have Israelites. Think about this. You have Israelites who don't believe that anything is possible. You got Israelites that say there's no miracles. You have Israelites that say there's no chariots. You have Israelites that say uh, Shiloh, Yahweh Shai, did no miracles. All manners of faithless doctrines are being pushed. Yet the Lord has allowed you to remain in the hundred percent. Meaning the hundred percent truth. And we have to abound in that Lord willing to understand that anything is possible, not just generally speaking. Because there's one day where the elect are going to wake up and everything that they know is going to be different. There's going to be a time when the elect wake up one day and things that have been said are impossible are going to be possible for the elect. That's going to happen. One day, everything the elect knows is going to change. There, I'll say this. One day, everything that the elect is, is going to change. As the scriptures say, then shall uh, it be known who is my chosen. At that point, there's going to be a difference where things that are deemed impossible are going to be possible for the elect. This is why Yahweh Shah said these things that he said in these scriptures concerning faith. This is why he went so hard against unbelief. Matter of fact, let's go to this. Let's go to Luke. This is Luke chapter one and verse 37. For with Yahweh Bashimah Shai, nothing shall be impossible. And we're getting familiar with that understanding. This is why you should marvel, you shouldn't marvel when people don't believe. Because to the natural man, the idea of things that have been told to them their whole life that are impossible being written. And you believing in those things against the multitude of people on the earth, on the earth requires an extraordinary level of faith, which is a gift from the heavenly father. A step further is believing that you are a part of that. And a step further is believing that you are possibly one of those who may be that number. That you may be one of those who are able to do impossible things. These are measures of faith that the elect are being built up to. Till we all come to the knowledge, right? Matter of fact, let's go to that. This is... Ephesians chapter four and verse nine. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And you have to meditate upon this for you to have a spirit to believe that Yahweh Shai died and was risen from the dead. Requires extraordinary faith. Why not abound in that, Lord willing? You already believe in things that the world has told you is impossible. Yet here it is. This truth is flourishing. Continuing verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of Yahweh by Shemel Shai unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Hamashiach. Come on. Come on, man. All come to the unity of the faith. All right. And that means no limitations. The things that we already believe, just the milk 
is more than men can understand. And it's coming to pass, even though they don't receive it. How much more so the other things that are going to happen? Man, imagine spiritual power. Brothers being beamed up. How the wind would feel. How it would feel to see how it shine in the flesh. Lord willing. These are things that get you excited about the times that we live in. These are things that make your problems not as big as you thought they were in the flesh. Because everybody don't have that same hope. This is why the scriptures talk about coming uh, to coming back as a child. Matter of fact. Because when you were a child, you thought anything was possible until somebody told you different. All right. This is uh, Matthew. Chapter 18 and verse three. And it reads, I'll start at two. And Yahweh called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. All right. And what are characteristics of children? They're humble because they, they need they need to be helped. They need to depend on the parent. And they're also faithful whatever you tell them they'll believe it that's why this is the renewing of our mind all right we have come into this understanding lord willing though we once knew this to abound in it to get back to that understanding of anything being possible in righteousness when yahweh was on the boat he slept while the uh while the disciples were worried about the water coming in. And he had to rebuke them. Why? Because they they doubted. Matter of fact, let's get that. Lord willing. Yep. This is Ma uh, Mark chapter four and verse thirty seven. And it reads, and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And Yahweh Shai, look what he said to them. He said, why are you so fearful and how is it that you have no faith? And this is what the Lord is increasing us in. If you believe through the spirit that the Lord brought you into this truth from whatever situation you fell into, all right, in the world, and the Lord delivered you from it and brought you brought you into this truth. He's preserved you unto this day. You believe that Hamashiach died and rose and is now at the right hand of the Father. You already believe in things that are deemed impossible to the world. How how much greater or, or how hard is it to believe? That the Lord can save you as an individual through the spirit if you continue. And that great things can be done through the spirit by you. When it say hope for good, we hope to be saved and we hope to be a part of that number, Lord willing. To be able to do these things that were deemed impossible, man. This is one of the second occasions where Yahweh Shah is dealing with water, all right, dealing with the sea and telling them, look, man, y'all got to step up your faith. Walking on the Lord say these things ye shall do in greater. Matter of fact, I'm going to get that. This is John chapter 14 and verse 12. Verily, verily, meaning truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. The works that I do shall he do also, 
and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. To not believe that is to basically think not believe the Lord, man. The Lord said verily twice. That means he said truly, truly. He said truly twice. He that believeth on me the works that I, I do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do. Do you believe that? Not just generally speaking, do you believe that? Because we have to exercise faith without limits, man. And it's now was the time to do it, not waiting until Jacob's trouble actually uh, goes full blown. That's not the time to, to now try to adopt uh, faith without limits It's now. The Lord said men are going to mount up. Can you imagine that? In first person. Looking at the ground and then looking at where you are. Could you imagine how the elect going to feel the first moment they're able to do that? Because these things are going to happen, man. And someone through the spirit of, of our nation who has this truth is going to do it, man. Do you believe? Because that's the most important part of this equation. Greater works than these shall he do. And Yahweh Shai is not a man that he should lie. Just like his father is not a power that he should lie. And this is why faith without limits is so important. There is no losses, all right, to the hopeful elect. I mean, to the elect, I'll say that. There is no losses to the elect. There are situations that seem like a loss initially, all right? There are uh, situations that seem like a defeat initially at the moment. But when you look at the story that's already written of the elect, there are no losses in this life for them. And there's always been a push, especially by Yahweh Shai during his walk, to exercise faith without limits. So Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are pushing this word and believing this word, all right, preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.